Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this final lesson on integration styles, lesson 22, we'll be taking a look at the messaging integration style. As we've seen from the prior three lessons, um, from the Enterprise Integration Patterns book by Gregor Hope and Bobby Wolf, they have identified four integration styles file transfer, shared database, remote procedure invocation, and messaging. Uh, so far in our journey, we've taken a look at the first three, file transfer, shared database, and remote procedure invocation. In this final lesson on integration styles, we're going to be taking a look at the messaging integration style. When we take a look at messaging, and this is an actual uh, diagram from the EIP book, um, really what we have are three applications, A, B, and C, all communicating to one another through events using messaging. It doesn't have to be a message bus, this could be a message broker, but the point is they're all communicating using events and messaging. And as a matter of fact, if we look at the different kinds of protocols used in messaging, there's quite a few. Of course, we have JMS, the Java Message Service, which is a standard in the Java platform for kind of standardizing on the API um, being product independent. Um, we also have in the Microsoft space in .NET, MSMQ, Microsoft Message Queue. One of my favorites happens to be AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, which is a standard in the industry. Um, however, it doesn't standardize on an API within any given platform, but rather AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, standardizes on the wire level protocol used to communicate between platforms. And so I may be able to use RabbitMQ in Java, and you may have Cupid in Ruby, and we can talk back and forth together. And so it doesn't matter on the product, it's just a standard wire level protocol. Um, my favorite, by the way, out of all of these is AMQP because messaging, when we talk about this as an integration style, is supposed to support heterogeneous interoperability. And JMS and MSMQ really are restricted to those platforms alone. And so that's, that's my story about AMQP. Um, uh, of course, Amazon SNS, Simple Notification Service, is what will be used for broadcast capabilities within Amazon Web Services. And SQS, Amazon's Simple Queuing Service, or Simple Queue Service, is what we would use to do point-to-point -point kind of queue-based messaging in um, AWS as well. Uh, Stomp is a very um, popular protocol, especially for communicating with uh, platforms like Ruby, um, simple text oriented messaging protocol. And as a matter of fact, things like uh, ActiveMQ have um, bridges built in uh, to be able to communicate between any of these that you see here and Stomp. And so that's a good uh, example. Uh, so for SMS messaging, you know, short um, uh, message peer-to-peer, -peer, SMPP is typically used for SMS and also for IoT, Internet of Things. When we talk about machine-to-machine -machine communication, we can also use messaging. Again, think of messaging as highly decoupled systems, high level of abstraction, and also, more importantly, cross-platform communication. So this works really well, the MQTT, MQ telemetry transport, um, for when we start talking about communicating between machines or equipment. Um, your chair and the desk, for example, can absolutely use messaging. And finally, uh, the old JT400 for communicating with AS400. And so these are the whole list of protocols that would fit within the messaging integration style. And as a matter of fact, if we look at messaging, we see a lot of positives. As a matter of fact, we get to this level of sophistication um, through this journey from file transfer all the way to messaging. In other words, we have highly decoupled systems. Application A, B, and C don't know anything about each other. As a matter of fact, here's a difference between RPI, remote procedure invocation, that we saw in the last section, and the messaging integration style. Because with messaging, I'm not communicating to another application. I'm communicating to a broker, to a queue. And so we have a very high level of system abstraction right here. Um, application A does not know anything about application B, its platform, what it's implemented is, where it's even located, or what its name is. So we have a very high level of abstraction. But with the messaging 
kind of integration style, I get guaranteed delivery. And I also get async and broadcast capabilities, three things that I could not get with RPI, remote procedure invocation. And finally, the ease of scalability, uh, specifically programmatic scalability, makes this a great, very powerful integration style for high performance, high scalable applications. So what could possibly go wrong with messaging? Well, a lot, as you can see. <laughs> One of the issues with messaging as an integration style is integration beyond a firewall is quite a challenge because, quite frankly, we don't have HTTP, HTTP with messaging. Granted, there are ways of merging messaging with RPI, Remote Procedure Call, to be able to merge these two integration styles to have RESTful JMS or RESTful messaging. But the point is, this core integration style really doesn't uh, uh, belong integrating beyond a firewall. That's where RPI, Remote Procedure Invocation, shines. Um, messaging as an integration style is fairly complex. It's, it's, uh, there are some complexities with not only implementation, but also with testing. A lot of these systems become uh, non-deterministic systems, especially broadcast capabilities. Um, error handling becomes quite a challenge, especially with async kind of fire and forget messages. If I send a message over to application B and it fails, um, there's no way of getting back over to me. And so, so these are some of the challenges. And those cross-platform standards um, are emerging. AMQP as a slow um, adoption rate, but is starting to emerge as an industry standard for cross-platform, but no real other standards exist. And so from a standard standpoint, it still is kind of running behind the others. Now, we've seen four integration styles in our journey. File transfer, shared database, remote procedure invocation, and messaging. And so, now that you've looked at all four of these lessons over the course of a month, here's the question for you. Which integration style do you think is the best one? And of course, you know me, so you know that this is actually a trick question. All of them is the answer. In other words, all four of these that we've gone through in this journey have their place in architecture. And as an architect, it's understanding the pros and cons of each of these integration styles to know when to use which. That really is the power of each of these. Each of these have their own strengths and they also have the weaknesses. And so the answer is all of them. And I guess, you know what the real answer is? It depends. That's the real answer. It depends. It depends on the context. In some cases, file transfer may be much better choice than messaging if I don't need the data until the end of the day. If I'm going across a firewall, remote procedure invocation is going to be my choice. Uh, shared database? Um, gee, I can rarely think of any good opportunity. No, uh, not being flippant, of course. Uh, I can, and that is the speed and ease of integration. I don't have to worry about contracts. I don't have to worry about latency. I don't have to worry about remote access protocols. Uh, that's where shared database becomes an advantage if I need quick and simple integration. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, uh, Lesson 22, Integration Styles and Messaging. We've now completed our tour of integration styles. So stay tuned next Monday for the next lesson in software architecture. Thank you so much.